In almost any electronic project, you will definitely need more than just one value of voltage. A way to achieve that are voltage regulators, like for example this 3.3 voltage regulator. Apply a higher voltage than 4 volts to this IC and it will always have a stable 3.3 volts at its output, which is a very common voltage in electronics. The bad thing about this is its very low efficiency that will make your project lose a lot of power. So, if your project uses batteries, this wouldn't be a good option. The best and probably the most efficient way to reduce or increase voltage are switched DC to DC converters. In these videos, we will take a look at the boost converter, the back converter, the back and boost converter and probably we will look a bit at the flyback converter. So let's get started. <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! In previous videos I often talk about linear voltage regulators, like for example the AMS1117 or the LM317. These ICs are so easy to use. Just solder them on your PCB, add some capacitors to reduce noise and that's it. In a past video I've shown you how to make this variable voltage regulator with the LM317. Using the potentiometer I can fix any voltage at the output. Watch that video for more. But this kind of voltage regulators have a very low efficiency at higher voltages. For example, if you want to power up your Arduino project and the 5 volts LED strip, just use an AMS1117 voltage regulator with a 5 volts output. But imagine that you only have 20 volts batteries and your entire circuit would draw around 1 or 2 amperes of current since you have like 2 meters of LED strip. That will produce a lot of heat on the IC which is last power. Common linear regulators won't withstand 30 watts of power and this would happen to your circuit. That's why for high power projects it's better to use a switch converter. Let's start with the back converter. This is a circuit that will lower the voltage. To better understand I will use real values instead of only tags like V in and V out. This is the basic circuit of a back converter. You'll need a switch, a diode, one coil and an output capacitor to store the charge. The switch could be a BJT or a MOSFET transistor. For better efficiency, I recommend you to use MOSFETs, in my case the IRFZ44N transistor. Ok, so let's take a look on how this circuit will reduce voltage. In order to study how it works, we will divide it in two stages. The on stage and the off stage. Let's start with the on stage and first remove all the components and only leave the switch and the load in order to understand why we need all the other components. Ok, so let's say that the load in our case will be an LED that needs 5 volts, but we only have 10 volts power supply. The basic idea of the switching model is that if we fast close and open the switch we could obtain those 5 volts. In the on state, the switch is closed, so the voltage applied to the LED is directly 10 volts, but we don't want that. And when the switch is off, the voltage would drop directly to zero. The idea is that if there will be a delay between the charging and discharging process, we could open the switch when the output reaches 5 volts and close it back again when we are lower than let's say 4.9 volts. If we fast close and open the switch, we could maintain the desired voltage. In order to add that delay, we put a capacitor to the output. A capacitor is like a jerry can, it has to be filled and then it could get empty. And that will take some time. In this way, when we open the switch, the voltage won't drop directly to zero volts. It will slowly discharge through the output load. Ok, so we now have a small delay for the charging process, which is what we wanted, 
but the charging time is still very fast and to charge a capacitor almost instantly requires a huge amount of current in a fraction of a second and that could damage the circuit over time. To also add a delay to the charging process, we should add a resistor that will limit the current. But a normal resistor would be a very inefficient way to do this, since it will lose a lot of power through heat. Another way to limit the current is using a coil, since it won't dissipate energy through heat. A coil doesn't like current changes, so it will limit the value, but at the same time we have a problem. It will also force the current to flow through the switch, in this case a MOSFET, even when the switch is open, in order to maintain that value. Coils could create huge spikes that could result into permanent damage to your components. So for that we should give the current another path to flow through. That path is through this diode that we add. Now when the switch is open, current could flow through the diode. And when the switch is closed, the diode would block the current since the cathode voltage is higher than the anode connected to ground. That's how the diode work. Ok, so now we have the delays that we wanted. We close the switch and the output will start charging through the inductor. When it reaches the desired value, we open the switch and the output will slowly discharge through the output load. We should set a threshold voltage. When the output will be lower than that threshold voltage, we close the switch back again, and so on. That's how we obtain a smaller voltage at the output. If you go on my webpage, you will also find all the mathematics behind on how to find that the output depends on the duty cycle. I won't go over that in this video, since it could be quite boring. Ok, so I said that when the switch is open, the output voltage will discharge through the load. But what would happen if the load changes its resistance to a lower value? The discharging process will be a lot faster, so it's obvious that the charging process should be faster as well. So, we need to directly relate the duty cycle of the pulse that will open and close the switch with the amount of current that will flow through the load, if we want the same output value for different loads. This process is called feedback. If the load is smaller, we should increase the PWM signal, so we could maintain the 5 volts that we set before. If you go to my webpage, you will find some circuits for the buck converter. To better understand how this works, I will mount this circuit using an Arduino to create the switch signal. The switch will be an IRFZ44N MOSFET, with a small BJT at the gate as a driver. I will read the value of this potentiometer and depending on that value I will map the duty cycle of the pulse to a lower or higher value as you can see here on my oscilloscope. This is the circuit that I will mount for this test. I connect everything on the breadboard. Apply 12 volts to the input and start moving the potentiometer. I connect my oscilloscope in order to observe the output and as you can see here I can increase or decrease the output with the same fixed input. In this case the green line on the oscilloscope is the PWM switch signal and the yellow one is the output. As you can see if I increase the duty cycle the output will increase as well but if I lower the duty cycle, the output will get lower. Ok, so I set the output to 5 volts. So we achieved the desired value of 5 volts. But now we have a different problem. Now, if I change the value of the output load, as you can see here, the output is not the same anymore. So what do we do? Well, we add a feedback to the circuit. Let's add a voltage divider to the output, with a resistor of 20K and one of 10K. In my case, I know that the maximum output will be 12 volts, since that's what we apply at the input. As you know, analog grid of the Arduino could go up to 5 volts. 
this voltage divider will drop the voltage from a maximum of 12 volts to around 3.75 volts using this formula. So, if you have a higher input than 12 volts, you should change the voltage divider resistance in order to keep the output always under 5 volts. Ok, so we read the output voltage. We set the desired voltage with the potentiometer inside of the Arduino code. And if the output voltage is higher than the desired value, we decrease the duty cycle and increase it if the output is lower. That's it! We have just added a crude feedback to our circuit. Now I change the load and the output is the same. Here as you can see I can still change the output value using the potentiometer. But now I change the output load with this potentiometer here and the output is the same. The only thing that changes automatically is the PWM duty cycle. As you can see now on the oscilloscope the PWM signal is bouncing a lot in order to maintain always the same output. If we look closer the output has a small ripple and it will never be a perfect straight line. That's due to the fast charging and discharging of the output capacitor between the threshold voltage and the desired value. Also, if we go even closer, we can see this high frequency oscillation due to the LC tank created between the coil and the capacitor, which will always resonate. Also, this would be an output without the output capacitor, just a high and low voltage with the same frequency of the switching pulse. Ok, so this is not the best way to create a buck converter. There are already made Specialite IC that will do this feedback. This is the LM2576 buck converter driver. It already has a feedback pin that will sense the current. This is the basic circuit for the buck converter using this IC. Here we have the output voltage potentiometer that will lower or increase the output. I mount this circuit on my breadboard for tests and indeed it works. As you can see I can change the output value using the potentiometer. The LM2576 does everything for me. Now here on my oscilloscope I have the input voltage with the green line and the output with the yellow line. The input is set to 12 volts and the output to 5. Now I change the input value but as you can see the output stays the same. The circuit works. I've got myself a buck converter. In this case we don't need an external switch since the LM2576 IC already has one inside. With the feedback pin connected to the output voltage divider the LM2576 will change the width of the pulse depending on the output in order to keep it constant. In this case use a Schottky barrier rectifier diode because it has a low forward voltage. This diode will leave the current flow when the switch is open. Ok I hope that you have learned something today about buck converters. Check my webpage and all the links below for more circuits, schematics and information. Stay tuned for future DC to DC switch converters tutorials like the boost converter and only one back and boost converter. I will also try to explain how the flyback converter works. Hey, if you like what I do and consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page. I will really appreciate that. Also, using the buy links that I provide in the description would help my workshop as well and the price for you would be the same. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. If you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page. Thanks again and see you later guys.